What's up? In today's episode, we're going to talk about a platform that has over 60 million items for sale that you can use to sell all of your candles or whatever else you're using. So let's dive in and talk about some of these tips. Hello, my name is Kevin from Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. Today, we're going to talk about business a little bit. So a lot of people are just getting into candle making and they want to sell these things. They've heard about Etsy, one of the largest online shops for handmade goods. And they say, well, I want to get into this. And they post a few things and nothing. Crickets. Well, today's episode, we're going to cover seven different strategies you can use to tell the Etsy platform that, hey, I'm here to compete. I've got some great stuff that I want to sell all these other people. So Etsy is a great platform for selling a lot of different items. Um, as of 2018, there were 60 million items for sale. On Etsy, 2 million sellers and a lot of buyers. <laughs> a lot of people are going to Etsy. When you're first starting out and you're getting into candle making, you say, oh, I don't know. I don't. No one knows that I'm selling this stuff. You can list it on Etsy and the platform will do the work. But you have to help the platform help you. Help the platform help you. And you do that by optimizing all these different components of your shop. And there are people who are way deeper into the Etsy theology than I am. I'm here to help mostly candle makers, but even if you don't make candles, don't leave. There might still be some good stuff here because this is all based on what we've learned about the Etsy algorithm and the engine and like what's going to help you just basic sales stuff too. So let's hop in. The first thing is I encourage you to niche down. What does this mean? Well, a lot of shops, you can kind of category categorize your item by a certain keyword. For instance, candles. You may be candles, I'm candles, you may be candles. Um, candles is a keyword, and if you search for candles, most certainly your items will show up, but they'll probably show up on page like 3060 because here's the deal. If you search candles right now, 788,000 results are gonna come up, and the odds of you being on the first page for that person are so low. Right, there's so many candles. So the idea of niching down is to say, well, I don't just sell candles. Maybe I sell personalized candles. And maybe I don't sell personalized candles. Maybe I sell personalized wedding candles. Think about the person who's going to Etsy and who wants to search for your item, right? This is traffic that you're trying to build organically from that platform. If you have a very specific item that you are selling, then that person who's looking for that specific item will find you by typing that in. Etsy is just a giant search engine, just like Google. And the more specific your keyword is, the more likely you're to show up in their results, and the more likely the people seeing your result on that page is good quality traffic. These people are looking for that specific item. So yes, you sell candles, yes, you sell jewelry. Whatever it is you sell, try to niche down, build out your keyword a little bit farther. So how can you do this? Well, three ways. First, enhance your listing titles to be a little more specific about what you're selling. And we'll talk about title design in a little bit. Second, talk about your shop title. You have a, a shop title, it says what you do. You also have some shop meta, like description stuff about your shop. Make sure that that's all optimized, that you've got that long tail keyword in there. Long tail keyword is something like personalized wedding candles. Personalized wedding candles, that's a long tail keyword compared to a short tail keyword, which would be something like candles or wedding, if you're looking for a wedding on Etsy. And the third thing is make your description very skim friendly, because if they happen to click on your listing and they go through, you wanna make sure that they know, oh yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for, and I love your candles. Okay, number two, number two is atmosphere. You need to build an atmosphere to your shop. What does this even mean? Well, when someone visits your shop, you want them to feel a little different. They want, you want to put your brand in front of them. There's a lot of shops on there that you can click on that are very kind of generic. They don't have anything really special going on. And these are what I call the intangibles of your shop is the atmosphere. How do you build atmosphere? Well, you build a good banner at the very top of your shop. You should have a unique built banner. You can do that on any number of photo editing or graphic design software that's out there. I'll link below. I use Canva Pro. That's me. 
I have a link below. It's an affiliate link. So if you sign up and do whatever, like I will receive a payment and that only helps support this educational channel. So, uh, but don't, no pressure, no pressure. The second thing is you've probably got colors for your brand. If you don't, you should probably consider doing that. But these colors, this palette that you're using, spread it around, put it everywhere in your shop and also make it pretty notable in your photography because these colors kind of tell you, oh yeah, I'm here. If you're from the Midwest or if you've been in a Target or a Walmart and you walk down the aisles, their colors are everywhere. You know you're in Target if you walk around. So I'm saying treat your shop like a real shop. Build the atmosphere. You can't put music. This isn't my space. But you can do a lot of other things to kind of build that intangible feeling that people get. And why is this important? Well, one of the parts of search engine optimization in Etsy is how long people kind of hang out in your shop. It's called a bounce rate. If they come in and they leave right away, that's a higher bounce rate. You don't want that. You, you want people showing up. And Etsy recognizes that. They say, wow, people love going here will boost their listing rank a little bit because we know that people are, who are looking for this thing will like this shop. And so the more you can get them to stay around and window shop, the more friendly that your store is for that, the better the algorithm is going to recognize your shop. Okay, number three is video. Video, this one is huge. If you're on Etsy and you're not putting video in all of your listings, you are missing out. First of all, Etsy just released listing specific video as a feature for the platform this year, 2020. And this is important because if any giant software company, Etsy or uh, YouTube or Instagram releases a feature, they want people to use it. And if you use it, they're more likely to boost your listing because they want to promote this cool thing. So listing videos, might, it's kind of new, it's something that a lot of people aren't doing, but incorporate it into every single listing. Well, how do you do that? Well, you're gonna try to tell the story. You, you don't just wanna take some random cheesy video of your candles if that's what you're selling. You wanna make your customer feel like they know what the experience will be like. You wanna give them a good representation of your product. and. Building a video where the customer can see the story being told in front of them and imagine themselves in that position, that's kind of cool. There's a lot of ways to develop a video for your listing. That's just one idea. Make sure that you film in 1080p HD, 30 frames per second, and check out the Etsy best practices. I've linked that below so you can go see that. Okay, number four is photography. And I've Ton, talked a ton about photography. I'll link the blog below. Super, super good tips in there. But but here's a high level what you should do. Consistency is huge. Consistency. You want your listings to have a consistent look and feel. It goes back to building that intangible atmosphere of your shop. You want your photos to all kind of start out the same way to represent your brand similarly across everything you have. And so that goes into kind of building this higher level photography, take good pictures and showcase your products in the same way. If you go to any mature store on Etsy, you'll see that like if you scroll through, it's like, oh, okay, it's all kind of the same. It's a lot like Amazon. Now, I encourage you to go another step farther. Do more than just the white backdrop picture. Do uh, any one of the six style photos that I recommend in my website. But really try to present what you're doing to the customer. And if you want to read more, just go to armitagecandlecompany.com slash blog slash product photography tips right there. Number five, customer feedback. This one is huge. If you've ever bought anything, especially if you go to Amazon, they kind of pioneered this whole idea. What do you do? You generally read the customer feedback. So you want to build that into your store as well. That's a level of social proof that you can give to your visitors that, hey, other people really like this. So you aren't taking a big gamble, right? You're not taking a huge risk by buying this because other people, similar like-minded customers also said this product was good. So that helps there. Now, how do you do that? Well, first, you can't have a crappy product. You have to build 
an outstanding product or deliver an outstanding experience to your customer so that they're even willing to consider reviewing, right? If you just sell something and, and you make it real casual and you're, yeah, you're not too excited about it and oh, you package it up, I'll ship it when I get to it, you're not going to get great raving reviews from your people. In fact, if you ask for a review, they might give you a bad review. <laughs> They took forever. They didn't seem to care. They were very unresponsive. So before you can even get customer feedback, make sure you're giving something that's feedback worthy. Yeah, quote that one right there. Yeah, pretty good. So things you wanna do is, is make the experience memorable. I'll say also be transparent. People like to see their product, especially if you do something really personalized. If you're sending pictures as it's being created so they know what to expect when it gets to them, they're gonna love that, right? That's gonna be cool and that's also just being transparent. Oh, he put it in the mail, she put it in the mail. That's awesome, I'm looking forward to it. So customers are gonna be excited for that. And then make sure that whatever you're doing is valuable. They have to believe that what they're paying you for is worth more than they're paying you for. Just being valuable. Sometimes people put a little extra items in their shipment that people like. With candles, throw a wax melt in there, right? They are not that expensive to make and you're not losing out. People love that. Just little surprises, that's memorable, that's valuable, right? And then if you're, if you're bold enough, if you're confident enough, follow up with those customers and say, hey, I work really well on referrals, I work really well on reviews. If you liked your experience or you wouldn't mind sharing, please come back to the shop leave a review. I'd love to hear what you think so that I can continue to be better and serve you the best, right? Pretty straightforward. Number six, and this one is so easy to do. You should, if you do nothing else from this video, make sure you do this one and that's fill everything out. Fill everything out, every single thing. Etsy puts together this listing and there's a lot of things to fill out. Sometimes you're not even sure what to put, but if you spend enough time on it, I'm sure you'd figure it out. And here's the reason. Etsy needs to know what your listing is about. Seems pretty obvious, but the algorithm wants to be able to tell that you make soy wax candles. If you're not filling everything out, if you're not putting as many pictures as they allow, if you're not putting it the right tags, if you're not describing the product accurately, the algorithm may not know exactly what you're talking about. Photos are good. And photos, you should also, if they ask for 10, give them 10. Give them 10 awesome photos. Take the time to do it because people love window shopping. It goes back, it goes back to number four, photography. But fill out every single field. The best listings on Etsy have a lot of pictures and have every single field filled out. And there's, this is not by accident. This is what Etsy, the platform, is looking for. So take the time, fill everything out. Okay, and the last tip today, last tip today, is your title. Your title should be some variant of your niche, the more specific niche, the long tail keyword. And what you don't wanna do is take these keywords, soy wax, candles, soy wax, candles, and stuff them into your title. That is Ugh. it's nasty, it's gross, and that is so 2005. This is 2020, or if you're in the future, this is later. Today, you just wanna have a consistent long tail keyword in your entire product line. Let's say a section of your shop is dedicated to soy wax candles, and you've decided that's your keyword. I'm not saying that's a great one, but for example, every single soy wax candle you're building should have its name but also include that long tail keyword. Don't stuff it, don't make it gross, but you're telling Etsy, hey, this shop, this section of my shop or my entire shop is dedicated to soy wax candles. You've built that long tail keyword in. So be consistent across that. It's kind of like a branding thing a little bit. Don't stuff your keywords and, and optimize your title in that way. And don't worry so much about having it with a lot of other keywords. Like there's a lot of, theory that goes into that. As a minor side, stuffing your description with keywords, not necessary. According to Etsy, the description is not optimized. S SEO is not taking the description into account. So build your description in a way that makes your customers love it, that makes your customers like to read it, 
The ones you want to read will read, the ones you want to skim will skim, so build it for both. That's my recommendation. For your title, it doesn't have to be like that. Okay, so that's a lot. But I don't want you to just walk away from this video. I want you to take this as an assignment. Even if you're not selling on Etsy, let's say you have a Shopify store, these items do kind of apply. No, there's not a search engine that you're optimizing for, but you're giving your customers an experience by having information, by having good photography, by having very clear titles, by delivering value to get those reviews from those people. So I would say that no matter what you're doing, some of these are just general sales advice for you so that you can have a great time with your customers. Your people are gonna love it. So, I wish you well. I hope that some of this was helpful. If it does, feel free to give me a like. Otherwise, I hope you make beautiful candles. I hope you have a great weekend. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.